for being here, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Let's have a wonderful discussion. Hare Bol. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Trinadapi Suniche na Toror Eva Sahishnuna Amanina Manadena Kirtaniya Sadahari Harer Nama Harer Nama Harer Nama Iva Kevalam Kolo Nastyeva 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 Gatiranyata Welcome everybody. This is a embassy of the spiritual world. We are not in San Diego right now. We are in a Vaikuntha embassy. So at least while you're here, there should be no anxiety. Because that is the symptom of Vaikuntha. No anxiety. Tomorrow when we re-enter the material world, we'll definitely have to face some anxiety. But for now, we're good to go. All in favor say Hare Krishna. Hare. So I'm going to cover three things tonight. Tomorrow is a very famous day, Diwali. And then uh, Tuesday is Govardhan Puja. And the third thing I want to talk about is Damodara. This is the month of Damodar, the month of Kartik, special, special month. It is said that any religious, what to speak of, spiritual activities you do in this month, you get a much higher yield on your investment. So you want to maximize. We have a few weeks left. You want to maximize your spiritual activities. I must recognize my authority, His Holiness Badri Narayan Swami Maharaj. Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyaye Bacha, Patatanang Pabhanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo. In case you're wondering. No, I don't like to correct you. But we are partners and God brothers, and I am your servant. Oh my God. Now please roll on. Yes. So just in case you're wondering why I have this. It's Maharaj's instruction that wherever I go in the three worlds, I have to bring my bill. So let's uh, hear a little bit about Diwali. First, Prabhupada has spoken about it. This is what I found. Diwali ceremony can be observed in the temple by illuminating hundreds of candles in different parts of the temple and offering special prasadam to the deity. This ceremony was observed by the inhabitants of Ayodhya, the kingdom of Lord Ramachandra, while Ram was out of his kingdom due to 14 years banishment by the order of his father Dasharatha. Ram's younger stepbrother, Bharat, took charge of the kingdom, and on the day in which Lord Ramachandra took back charge again from his brother and was seated on the throne, this is observed as Diwali function. This is the original idea of Diwali, or originally known as Deepavali. Deepa means candles. And when numerous candles are lighted, it is called Deepavali. In India, this Deepavali function is celebrated as a special auspicious occasion. All right. Then I did some research on Google. Ooh. Just to get a perspective. So what I found was... Um, Different parts of India see Diwali differently. So we already talked about, Prabhupada already talked about the lighting of the lamps. And uh, it is on the night of the new moon to invite the presence of Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. Whereas in Bengal, 
the goddess Kali is worshipped. In North India, the festival celebrates the royal homecoming of Lord Ram, along with Sita, Lakshman, and Hanumanji, to the city of Ayodhya after defeating Ravana, the ten-headed king of the demons. That was, you did that yesterday? You, you took care of Ravana. In South India, which I find, this I find fascinating. In South India, the festival marks Krishna's defeat of the demon Naraka Asura or Bauma Asura. That's one of my favorite Krishna pastimes. How Krishna killed the Bauma Asura. And Bauma Asura had kidnapped 16,100 princes, princesses. And so when Krishna killed Naraka or Bauma Asura, he saw all these princesses kidnapped, so he released them. But they were looking at them. So Prabhupada on one tape says, Krishna says, so what do you want? And the queens or the princesses indicated that since they had been kidnapped in Veda culture, no one would agree to accept them as wives. So the queen, the, all the princesses indicated to Krishna, well, you saved us. You have to marry us. So Prabhupada said, Krishna said, okay, let's go. So Krishna took only 16,100 princesses back to his capital in Dwaraka, married them. And if you read the Krishna book or the uh, 10th canto of Bhagavatam, Krishna only had 16,108 wives, but each wife had her own palace. That makes Krishna very unique. And not only that, it's not that each queen had to wait 16,108 nights to be with her husband. No. During the day in Krishna's capital, there'd be one Krishna. But then in the evening, when it was time to come home, just like we all come home from work and we go home at night. So there was one part of Dwaraka where all the 16,000 palaces were constructed by Vishvakarma. And so when Krishna would enter that gate, one Krishna would become 16,108 so that each wife could snuggle Krishna at night. That's my kind of God. Like in uh, Western culture, when, when something, the way I was raised in New York, uh, we used to say, oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. When something is very nice, we say it's cool. So I say, Krishna's not cool. He's ice cold. <laughs> so there are millions of reasons why I love Krishna. I'm sure you have your reason. Whatever the reason, it's good. As long as you love Krishna. And still some celebrate Diwali as a commemoration of the marriage of Lakshmi and Vishnu, while others observe it as the birthday of Lakshmi. So that's tomorrow. So now I would like to talk about this Damodar, month of Kartik, this special month. It began on the last full moon, which was, I think, October. October 9th, and it'll end the next full moon in November. So there's a song, Damodar Ashtaka, eight prayers. And uh, the first of the eight prayers is called the Mula, or the root from which all the other come. So I'll just sing this first one. If I could have my best drummer, thank you for drumming. And Krishna Gata, thank you for helping me in the kirtan. I needed all the help I could get.
Nama Mishwarang Sachid Ananda Rupang Lasat Kundalam Gokule Brajamanam Nama Mishwarang Sachid Ananda Rupang Lasat Kundalam Gokule Brajamanam Yashona bi o lukalad davamanam Padam rishtam at yantato drutya gopya Yashona bi o lukalad davamanam Padam rishtam at yantato drutya gopya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Everybody please One more time, everybody, everybody, come on together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you. So, um, this first Dhamma Darashtakam prayer, I bow down to the Supreme Controller. So the author of this song is very aware of the Siddhanta, the conclusion of the Vedic philosophy. There is Vedanta, the end of knowledge, the conclusion of knowledge. There's a point. What, what is the point? So one of the main points, you could say the, the main point, is that Krishna is the supreme controller. There are many controllers here on planet Earth, throughout the universe, in the spiritual sky. There are so many controllers with the Sanskrit word Ishwara. Everybody can say? Ishwara. So... And the author of this song is saying, but I'm going to bow down to the Supreme Controller. Now, in the next line he said, and his form, his body, is composed of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. Anybody have that kind of a body? We don't. We have defective material bodies. You know it better than me. You look in the mirror every day, right? You wake up, oh man. Another gray hair, another wrinkle. Or less hair. Or less. <laughs> I give you a ding. <laughs> so, we know very well these bodies are a bad bargain. They're inherent with so many defects. But Krishna's body is eternal. And Krishna knows everything, past, present, and future. That's what he says in Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna's body is full of bliss. These bodies that we have, uh-uh, they're not full of bliss. But Krishna's body has all those three features. Now, one thing that I like about this philosophy, because I was not raised Hindu, I was not born Hindu, I was born, what we say, Malecha Yavana, uh, born in a, a low-class body, family. Pious, but materially low-class. So, when I came upon this philosophy, many things impressed me. 
Of course, you've heard me say, those who know me and who have heard me many times, the big thing was the food. That's what really did it for me. So if you're only coming from the food, you're just like me. Because that's how I started. And look where I wound up. So be careful. There's something in the food. <laughs> but it's good. So what I, one aspect of this philosophy that I like is that you get detailed, confidential information about God. This impresses me. Detailed and confidential. Look this next line. So this supreme controller whose body is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss, he wears earrings. And as he walks, as he plays, they play and swing. They are shark-shaped earrings. And this person, Supreme Controller, lives in a place called Gokula, Brindavan, the transcendental abode. But this Damodar song is depicting just one of Krishna's leela or pastimes. Sometimes I'm asked, what does that mean, leela pastimes? It means just like there are movies, they make the movies very exciting with a nice story, especially love story, right? Action and so leela is like that. Something that God has done, it's not, uh, what is that word I'm looking for? Anyway, it, it actually took place. It's not a fantasy. Historic? Huh? Historic? Yeah, it's historic. But there's, it's something that it's not. Um, it's not a fable. It's not, ah, uh, here's the word. Ding. Krishna finally told me. It's not mythology not mythology. It actually took place just 5,000 years ago on this planet Earth in a place called Gokula. Gokula is still there. So, in this particular instance, Krishna is three or four years old and Krishna is playing, that's the word, playing like an ordinary human being. He's still God. He's still the supreme controller. But he's playing. So what, what happened here? He is afraid of his mother. Yashoda Devi. Why is he afraid of his mother? Because he made nonsense. He did nonsense things. Before this pastime, it is described that Krishna and his elder brother, Balaram, they were doing many mischief in the neighbors. They would steal butter and yogurt from the neighbors. And if they didn't like the butter and yogurt, they would urinate right there on the floor. And what else would Krishna and Balaram do? They would find sleeping babies and pinch them to make them cry. Yeah, they were doing, and there were complaints. It's not that they got away scot-free. The neighbors went to Yashoda, you must do something about your naughty boy. And one time, another time, there was a complaint from one of Krishna's friends. Mother, did you know? Krishna ate dirt today. So Mother Yashoda got angry. Well, Krishna, come here. Open your mouth. Have you eaten dirt? Krishna, no, no, I didn't eat dirt. So when Yashoda looked in Krishna's mouth, what did she see? The whole universe. And she also saw herself and Krishna in Krishna's mouth. So momentarily she became stunned. Who is, what is this son? Is he some great demigod? Who is this? But then, immediately, Mother Yashoda becomes overwhelmed by motherly affection. So, up to this point, there were 
different mischievous things that Krishna and Balaram had done. Now, this pastime of Damodar, if you study, it took place on Diwali Day. So, that's how I celebrate Diwali. I read all the different things. But for me, Diwali means Damodar Leela. So, once upon a time, as all, but this is not a story, this is history, not story, history. Mother Yashoda, on this Diwali day, was thinking, my son is so restless. I can't, he's doing so much nonsense, mischief. Um, why is he going to the neighbors? Perhaps he doesn't like the food he's getting at home. All right. Today I'm going to make special butter and yogurt because Yashoda, she's the queen of Gokula. Her husband Nanda Maharaj is the king of this place, Gokula or Vraja. So Yashoda being the queen and Nanda is the leader of the cow herder community, so everything is based on the cows. So Yashoda had special cows and those cows were being fed special kind of grasses that would flavor the milk. And Yashoda being the queen, she could have snapped her finger. Okay, you, come here. You, she was in charge of a whole retinue of servants, but no. She wanted to make the yogurt herself, motherly affection. Mothers do that. Wives do that. Just like today, my wife made special breakfast for me. Pancakes. I'm lucky. Very lucky. So, Yashoda wanted to make special butter and yogurt. So she was churning. Churning. Anybody know the system in India? how they make the churn, the butter, and uh, maybe you've done it in your childhood, right? It's a very amazing process. No machines, hand labor, right? Yes, builds up muscles. So, Yashoda is um, churning the butter, and she's also singing songs. She's singing songs about all the different things that her son Krishna has already done and so many things so either she herself or she got someone to compose these songs about her son so she's churning and happy and singing the songs and Krishna wakes up from taking a nap and he comes and indicates that he would like mother Yashoda to breastfeed him Remember, Krishna is only three or four years old. So Yashoda, being a loving mother, she stops the churning, takes Krishna on her lap, and allows him to drink the breast milk. But all of a sudden, she can hear on the stove, the milk is boiling over. Anyone who's had to clean up a stove where the milk has boiled over that's not a walk in the park. You have to really scrub. You really have to work. So she hears the milk is overflowing. So she has to stop Krishna from breastfeeding to take care of the overflowing milk on the, on the oven, on the stove. But Krishna is not happy because he's not finished. So Krishna bites his lips. He takes a stone and throws it at the butter pot and it breaks and the butter comes oozing out. And what does Krishna do? He takes some of the butter, he steps in it and runs away because he knows he's done something naughty. So he runs away. Remember, he stepped in the butter. So when Yashoda comes back, she sees the broken pot. She doesn't see Krishna, but she can see the butter-smeared footprints because Krishna's feet 
have special markings. I've said this before. If anyone says they're God, ask them, show me your feet. If they don't have the special markings and it's just cracks and lines, they're not God. Trust me. Real God has special markings on the feet. So Yashoda can trace out Krishna's footprints and there in the corner, Krishna is standing up on a ulukala, rice grinding, wooden rice grinding mortar. And Krishna has taken a, a stock of butter that's hanging from the ceiling. And what is Krishna doing? He's looking this way. He's looking that way because he knows eventually mother is going to find me. So he's anxious, but he's giving the butter to his good old friends, the monkeys. Anyone who's been to Brindavan, there are so many monkeys. And if you're not careful, they'll take your beads, they'll take your watch. They're very crafty monkeys. They'll take your passport. You got to be, you're a, what to speak of iPhone, yes. So Krishna is. And then Yashoda arrives, and Krishna goes like this. And Yashoda has a stick in her hand because she's angry. So when Krishna sees Yashoda with the stick, he jumps down and runs very fast. He doesn't want to get beat with the stick. No kid does. What kid? Do yes, mother, please beat me. No. Krishna is playing like an ordinary child. He runs away. So it took Yashoda some time to actually capture him because Yashoda is a full-bodied woman. She doesn't go to the gym and work out. She's full-bodied. So she's not very swift, but eventually she captures Krishna from behind. And Krishna, as it says here, he's shaking. He's trembling. He's got tears in his eyes his kajal mascara is now smearing running down his face and he's actually afraid again playing playing like an ordinary child so yashoda is a good mother and she thinks i had to show the stick to show krishna i'm serious but she's thinking no the stick, that's too much punishment. Punishment does not fit the crime. So she throws the stick away. And she said, but this child is so naughty. I, I cannot finish my housework. Just see, even the mother of God has to work. So it's not that when I go to the kingdom of God, I'm just going to sit back and watch football all day. No. Even you go to the kingdom of God, you're going to have to work. But that work is pleasure. Now, I don't know about you. Most people have a job. They don't look at it as pleasure. Maybe you do. If you do, you're lucky. I can say that because my work is hearing and chanting. And so, yes. But for most people, going to work is not pleasurable. So, the mother of God has to work, but it's enjoyment. Ananda. It's full of pleasure. So, Yashoda thinks, okay, I'm not going to beat him, but I must tie him up because he's so restless. I don't know where he may go, and I can't do my housework. So, she gets some rope, and she wants to tie up Krishna. But when she tries to make the final knot, it's two fingers too short. So she calls one of the servants, bring more rope. So she adds more rope. And when she tries to make the final knot, huh? It's still two fingers too short. So all the rope in the house is brought, tying, trying to tie up Krishna, and once again, it's two fingers too short. Now, by this time, all of the neighboring ladies have come and they're all smirking and laughing. Like, 
because she can't tie up Krishna. And even Yashoda goes, ugh. You can, you can imagine. She's tried and tried and tried, and it's still two fingers too short. So Yashoda goes, ugh. So when Krishna sees that Yashoda is flabbergasted, Krishna then allows himself to be tied up. He wanted to play this mystic show on Yashoda, right? Because he's playing. But when he saw that his mother is now frustrated, so Krishna now allows himself to be tied up. And in the song, I didn't sing the verse, but in the song there is two words. Everybody say, Bhakti Badham. So bhakti means love and devotion. That is the only thing that can impress God. Because he already has everything. He already has, he's already the supreme controller. He has all beauty, all strength, all power, all wisdom, all knowledge, all renunciation. He has everything. So nothing I can offer is going to impress Krishna except my heart. That's what Krishna is looking for. We said Krishna is the supreme controller. Krishna, another name for Krishna, please say, Ajita. Undefeated, unconquerable. If you read the Krishna story, Krishna's record, undefeated. I remember and I was a kid, there was this famous boxer athlete, Muhammad Ali, and he used to boast, I am the greatest. No, you're not the greatest. Krishna is the greatest. But what does Krishna want? What is more powerful than Krishna? Love of Krishna. So, the lesson here, remember, no matter how much rope she brought, it was always going to be two fingers too short. Even if she had brought all the rope in the universe, it still would have been two fingers too short. Because in Sanskrit, the word is guna. Everybody? So guna can mean rope. Guna can mean quality. And guna can mean the modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, which definitely tie us up. We are right now tied up by the modes of ignorance and passion and goodness. And liberation means to become free from those ropes of the modes of nature. But the modes of nature cannot tie up Krishna because Krishna is ajitta. He's unconquerable. So nothing material is going to tie up Krishna. No rope, no quality, only one thing, love and devotion, pure love and devotion. That's why Lord Chaitanya's whole philosophy is about there's something beyond liberation. It's like, so many times in my career, I would go out chanting or preaching and a certain religious cult would come up. Are you saved? And I would say, oh, most definitely. I am saved. I have Prabhupada. I have Krishna in my heart. I am saved. So for many, many religions, and philosophies, their ultimate goal is liberation, salvation. But Lord Chaitanya says, no. There's something beyond moksha, beyond liberation, beyond salvation. Love of God. Oh, I love this concept. To me, this is so vital. I've, I've told the story so many times. I know you won't believe me, but 50 years ago, I was a hippie. Yeah, I know. I had hair down to here. I had a big beard. And I was, you know, 
a hippie. And so, my favorite song, All You Need Is Love, but I never found it. I didn't find it with Linda or Michelle or Dina or I couldn't find it. So it was always an empty song. Where is my love? I can't find. But then I found Prabhupada's books. I found these Hare Krishna devotees. And one of Prabhupada's early messages, yes, you have that loving propensity. It's there in everyone. Everyone has that loving propensity. But Prabhupada pointed out, you're putting it, you're investing it in the wrong place. That's why I can't get no satisfaction. That's why. Because I'm putting my love in something that's not really capable of fulfilling my loving propensity. So Prabhupada was saying, you give your love to Krishna. And one time in 1975, Prabhupada was in Atlanta, Georgia. And it was a Sunday feast. And so I was, like the devotee said, I was a brahmachari with orange robes, shaved head, traveling around the United States, distributing books. So I said to myself, this might be my only chance. So Prabhupada was speaking the lecture, and then he asked for questions. So I said, this is my chance. So I raised my hand. Prabhupada, what pleases you the most? And Prabhupada had his secretary, Tamal Krishna Goswami, repeat the question. And then Prabhupada, he tilted his head, he closed his eyes, and he uttered into the microphone, if you love Krishna. So I take that as the order of my spiritual master. That this life, I, have, I made this decision in 1973. I gave up pursuing my rock and roll career. I gave up being a hippie. I decided, all right, I'm at the crossroads. What am I going to do with my life? I'm on the verge of 23 years old. What am I going to do? Am I going to pursue this hippie life, this rock and roll dream? No. I'm giving this life to Prabhupada and Krishna. Best decision I ever made in my life. No, I would do it a thousand times over. After all, where else can you get this great food? <laughs> so, that's my instruction from Srila Prabhupada. Love Krishna. And it's easy to love Krishna. If you read about Krishna, my favorite book is Krishna book, and you just read about Krishna, you can't help but become attracted. As I said before, he's cool. God is a musician. I'm a musician. Oh my God. God is a musician. He plays a flute. Check one up for Krishna. Krishna is a dancer. Krishna likes to play. And Krishna is the greatest lover. And I've been reading this Krishna book. Now I joined in 1973. So from 1973 to now, I'm still reading the same Krishna book every, every Wednesday. Sounder can tell you, I do a Zoom class on Krishna book for devotees in Panama and some others that join in, but primarily it's for the devotees of Panama. So every week we enter into Samadhi and we're just hearing about Krishna's beautiful pastimes. And by the end of the hour, I'm just ecstatic because Krishna is so attractive. And I'm reading this year after year after year. I don't get to, this Damodar. 
I just checked on my YouTube page. I've done maybe about 15 Dhammadar lectures over the years. It's still ever fresh. It's still exciting. Did you enjoy the Dhammadar story? Yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> so, one more that we're going to talk about, Govardhan, which is Tuesday. You're having a big festival on Tuesday? We have a festival for the deities on Tuesday, and we have our big festival. Don't miss it. It's the biggest festival of the year. It's also a transcendental food fight. From the Govardhan Hill made of nice prasadam, all packed up, neat and clean, we throw it to the crowd. And it's like spiritual fast break basketball. You don't want to miss it. So when's that? That, I'm sorry, thank you. It is Saturday. Saturday. Saturday starting at 6. There you go. Don't miss it. Be there or be square. Yes. Yes, right here, live in living color. The best temple in the world. It's right here. You don't need to go anywhere else. You already have the best temple. I've seen many, many temples. Why do you think I drive 90 miles once a month to come here? Because this temple is the best. All in favor, say Hari Bol. Now, of course, when I go to L.A., what do you think I say? <laughs> like next week, I got to go to L.A. Hey, you got to, you know, you got to work the crowd, you know? <laughs> you don't want to bite the hand that feeds you. What? Where are those Christians? Yes, we're, yes, provided Christian. You can correct me, provided what? No, no. no this, don't change it. It's perfect. Right. Hare Krishna. So, no, you said provided it, there's Krishna. Gotcha. Yeah, that's it. So, on Tuesday and, of course, on Saturday, especially this temple, Jai Sri Sri Radha Giridhari. Krishna has so many names. These names uh, depict his qualities, his nature, his uh, position and function as the supreme controller. But his best names are ones that deal with his relationships with his devotees. So Giridhari, he lifted a mountain. Now, when this took place 5,000 years ago, here on earth, in Vrindavan, okay, it took place. Krishna's father, Nanda, was about to do a yearly sacrifice for the king of heaven, Indra. And Krishna asked his, now Krishna at this time is seven years old. So, Krishna was asking his father, so what is this sacrifice? I see so much business is going on, so much the Brahmins are here, and so much activity. What is this all about? So Nanda was thinking, I don't know how to explain this. He's just a seven-year-old boy. So Nanda said, well, you got to understand, we're a farming community, we're a cow herder community. Our main thing is taking care of cows. So the cows have to eat grass. That's what they eat. And grass grows when there's rain. And Indra Dev is in charge of the rain supply. So it is the tradition that we offer worship and honor to Indra so that we will get sufficient rain for our cow herder community. So Krishna spoke at this time a atheistic philosophy, karma mimangsa. Basically, karma mimangsa is how the world works now. In your job, in your work, you can be Christian, Muslim, Jew, atheist, gay, whatever. Just do your work. That's all that matters. Whatever you want to believe, that's all right. Just get the job done. So karma mimangsa philosophy means whether there's a God or not God, don't worry about it. Do your work and you will get your results. You'll get what you need. So Krishna tried to use this philosophy to stop his father from worshipping Indra. So you may think, 
Well, why would Krishna do that? Because Indra is Krishna's servant. He's, he's been given that service to be in charge of the rain. But it is mentioned, Krishna specifically wanted to agitate Indra. He definitely, specifically, because Krishna could, could detect, hmm, that Indra, he's becoming a little puffed up. I need to take him down a notch. So Krishna spoke this philosophy just to get Nanda Maharaj to not do the, the uh, Indra Puja. And Nanda Maharaj countered and said, no, 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 well, I, he gave it other reasons. And then Nanda Maharaj said, okay, Krishna, let's do first the Indra Puja, because Krishna had suggested, instead of worshiping Indra, my recommendation is we should worship the cows, the Brahmins, and Govardhan Hill, because this is what actually sustains us. We are living off of this Govardhan Hill. We are living from the cows and we need the Brahmanas to perform religious rituals for us. So Krishna was saying, this is what really sustains us, not this Indra. And he also said, we've done this Indra Puja so many times, Indra's never come. So Nanda Maharaj said, okay, okay, good. Let's first do the Indra Puja. Then we'll do your Govardhan Puja. Krishna said, no, no, no. There's not enough time, not enough money. No. So, the characteristic of the residents of Vrindavan, they simply love Krishna. That's it. So, Nanda Maharaj, because he has so much affection for his boy, he says, all right, we'll do what you say, Krishna. So, they do exactly what Krishna says. Krishna says, all right, this is how we're going to worship Govardhan Hill. The Brahmanas are going to chant the Vedic mantras. We're going to decorate the cows all nicely with uh, gold and silver and garlands. And we're going to simply circumambulate Govardhan Hill and then Krishna. Now, here's another reason why I love Krishna. Krishna said we should have a big feast. And Krishna book Bhagavatam gives the exact um, itinerary, the, the, the whole, what? Menu. menu. Get what I do without you. The whole menu. Rasgula, Gulabjaman, Samosa. Pakora, dal, halava, rice. Okay, I'm hungry. <laughs> and he said that no, uh, so many different... Now, he didn't mention tacos. I'm sorry. And he didn't mention burgers. Krishna mentioned many, many things. Okay? Because sometimes people say, oh, I want to offer this to Krishna. So I say, well... Here's the kind of things Krishna wanted on Govardhan Puja. He might take a hint from these, especially samosa, my favorite, among other things. I have lots of favorites. I think I have 10 favorites. So, and Krishna said, everyone should be fed, fed sumptuously, up to the neck. And not only that, Everyone, even the low-class people, even the uh, outcasts. And Krishna said, even the dogs should get nice prashadam. So if you have a dog, give your dog prashadam. <laughs> yes. So they're circumambulating. Govardhan Hill, Kirtan is going on. And all of a sudden... There's this huge form of Krishna and this huge form of Krishna is showing that he's actually Govardhan Hill. And Krishna is also circumambulating Govardhan Hill and everyone is bowing down to this huge form of Krishna who ate all the offerings. Oh, they also had chapatis. 
another one of my favorites, chapatis. So Krishna himself is worshiping himself. Like I said, who's cooler than Krishna? Nobody. Then Krishna gives a warning at the end. Anyone who does not worship Govardhan Hill, they might get bitten by the snakes that are there on Govardhan Hill. So you definitely want to come Saturday. We don't want anything bad happening to anybody. So while this is going on, up in the heavens, Indra is fuming. Indra can see what this Krishna has done. So Indra is angry. He said, these residents of Vrindavan, who do they think they are? They're neglecting me and listening to this seven-year-old over-talkative child? Yes, Indra uses this blasphemous language. So Indra calls, calls the clouds of destruction, Sangvartaka. And they're hesitant. They don't want to, they know what's going on here. So Indra says, Sangvartaka clouds, I want you to decimate Vrindavan. So for seven days and seven nights, these clouds of destruction rain down on Vrindavan. And Indra told the clouds, I'll also come with you to give you support. So there was lightning and thunder and hail, and it was unseasonally cold. So the water is starting to rise. So the first to approach Krishna are the cows. And Krishna, there's a mantra, Go Brahmana Hitayacha. Krishna's first concern are the cows, mother cow. So Krishna has to save the residents of Vrindavan. They have come. Krishna, please save us. We're going to drown. So what does Krishna do? He lifts the Govardhan hill. He's only seven years old. And he effortlessly lifts Govardhan Hill. And the description is there. Like a child can pluck out a mushroom. Easy. No effort. So Krishna holds up Govardhan Hill. And holds it with his left hand. Just with his pinky. And so Govardhan Hill becomes an umbrella. And Krishna tells the cows and the residents. Come under my umbrella. So after seven days and seven nights, there's no flooding. The residents are safe under Krishna's umbrella. Indra comes to his senses. Uh-oh. I didn't really realize who this over-talkative child, who he is. I should have known better. So Indra leaves the heavenly planets and he comes with a transcendental surabi cow. And the rain has stopped. And Krishna then tells the residents, okay, the danger is gone, come out. And Krishna puts Govardhan Hill back where it's situated. Indra comes, and he comes very stealthily. And he bows down to Krishna. And he says, many prayers... Indra realizes that he has committed an offense against his master. So Indra prays, oh, I am a big fool. I have uh, offended you. So Krishna is listening to Indra's prayers of begging forgiveness. So Krishna told Indra, all right, Indra, I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to punish you. But I warn you, Indra, I am the supreme controller, not you. And you're only the king of heaven because I allow you. So, and then there's one line which I really like. Krishna says, when I see somebody get too puffed up, my habit is to 
bring that person down from the heights of his impudency. Krishna arranges different ways. I have lots of experience with this. You just ask my wife. She'll tell you I am a rascal, troublemaker. So I've been smashed by Krishna so many times. Still, I don't know how I'm here. I guess Krishna is cool. So Krishna warns Indra that yes, you can be Indra, but I warn you, rule the heavenly planets, but without egotism. Always remember you're my servant. And that is the essence of Lord Chaitanya's instructions. I chanted that mantra as I chant before every lecture. Trinada pi suni chena, turar api sahishnuna, amani na manadena, kirtaniya sadahari. Lord Chaitanya's instruction is that one should always be meek and humble. One should think oneself lower than the blade of grass. One should be like the straw in the street. And one should be tolerant like the tree that has to tolerate winter and summer and people carving their initials. The tree didn't ask for a tattoo, but people come and they carve. The tree gives its fruits and flowers People cut their branches, but the tree never protests. So Lord Chaitanya gave us this tree meditation to teach us how to be tolerant. And one should offer respect to everyone because in everyone's heart, Krishna is there. So I have to offer my respects to each and every one of you because God is is in your heart. I know, I know, I have the same thought. I look at this person. God is in their heart. Nah. Yep, God is in their heart. I can't hate anybody. And so let me offer my respects to you. Vancha kalpatrubhyascha, kripasindubhyayepacha, patitanang pavanibhyo, vaishnavebhyo, namo namaha. And then the hardest one for me. One should not be worried, concerned about what others are saying or thinking or they're praising me. No. I simply have to do my hearing and chanting. Let's finish up with a little, little kirtan. Did you enjoy? Did you learn anything today? Were you enthused? I hope so. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Everybody, one more time. One more. One more time. Everybody, clap your hands and sing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Now I usually end up uh, in my lectures wherever I go I like to give blessings who would like a blessing all right so here's the trick you put your hands over your heart close your eyes my dear Lord Krishna, please bless these nice devotees. Take away their anxiety 
and throughout the rest of their lives. May they feel your presence in their heart and may they always feel love for you. One more time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. And if you liked it or you didn't like my lecture, tell Balaram and that will determine whether I come back next month or not. Thank you very much for being patient and tolerant. I hope I see you again. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank you, Narantan.